Your Excellency, Dr. Yaakob Ibrahim, Singapore Minister for Communication and Information. Excellencies, Minister from ASEAN Member States, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. I would like to begin my expressing my high appreciation to the Republic of Singapore for inviting me as one of the keynote speakers at this very important conference. This conference is timely effort and becomes more relevant to all of us in our common and the full to respond to the rapid development of cyber technology that this not only provides more opportunities but also brings challenges to our people. Nowadays, as a logical consequence of the rapid propagation of information communication technologies or ICT, the world is becoming more transparent and interconnected, if not yet inseparable. Considering the existence of wide range of connectivity, it has practically created a borderless world. In one hand, it provides vast opportunities for all nations, yet in the other hand, its power can also magnify shocks in the global economy. It can facilitate political, security, economy, and social cooperation between nations. While in the wrong hands, it can be an instrument of crimes and discourses numerous data may be related closely to national security or private information that should be protected in accordance with the existing laws. This is one of the reasons why we come and discuss this matter in this very important gathering by focusing our deliberations, especially on cyber security issues. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the continuous growth in number and sophistication of cyber threats reminds us that no person or organization is immune from cyber attacks. No matter where your business is operated, what the nature of your business is, or how big or small your business is, the threat is cyber attacks should not be underestimated. We realize that state agencies, including law enforcement, as well as private sectors, have to catch up these fast-growing threats by strengthening our cyber security capacity. This is a crucial task for us in maximizing the positive opportunities and minimizing the negative threats of this New Year's space development. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, let me share some thoughts to strengthen our efforts in addressing the challenges in the cyber security issues. First, our cooperation and partnership are necessity, a partnership that will ensure of our success in addressing the challenges of the cyberspace. More importantly, a partnership that will optimize and guarantee that the cyberspace becomes a positive force for mutual progress, security, and prosperity, such as poverty elevation, climate change, socio-political conflicts, corruption, natural disasters, and energy crisis as well. Why this cooperation is very important to ASEAN? ASEAN as a region that has been part of the global community must prepare itself from cyber attacks. We cannot afford to see the damage that it may cause to our economic progress and development. ASEAN, with a population of approximately 639.4 million, or 9% of the world population, and the largest portion of that figure is the number of Indonesia's population of 260.6 million, or 40.8% person of the ASEAN population has provided great potential on economic cooperation, including on digital economy. 
It becomes significant market on trade, services, and investment. It is considered as part of the engine of global economic growth. ASEAN enjoys this progress emanated from our ability to maintain peace and stability of our region. That is one of the reasons why we are fully aware of the importance of our collective efforts to promptly respond to any threats, including cyber attacks, that could spoil our economy development. We in ASEAN are fortunate to have principle of caring and sharing community, which is no one is left behind. Within the context, ASEAN should approach cyber threats in a cohesive way, like the way we respond to other non-traditional threats, such as transnational crimes, including terrorism and its final more, and its financial capability, which could not be separated from cyber crimes. Second, we need also to develop and promote cyberspace principles and norms that will support and sustain development, that will bring common progress instead of marginalization of world citizens, that will promote democracy and tolerance instead of extremism and hatred, and that will also strengthen cooperation and collaboration instead of confrontation and rivalry. The development of establishment of cyber norms has been taking place through the United Nations for Governmental Groups Expert, or UNGGE. Since early 2016, Indonesia has actively participated in cyber norm formation through the UNGGE together with 24 other countries, such as the United States, China, Russia, and United Kingdom, to establish a cyberspace that is open, secure, stable, accessible, and peaceful, as well as inclusive and tolerant. Third, the involvement of relevant stakeholders is crucial, as cyber threats are not only targeted to government infrastructure, but also affect enterprises. It's also important that underline that fighting cyber crimes is a shared global responsibility, not only for governments, but also for the private sector, civil society, and other stakeholders all together. I am therefore pleased to note that this conference has so far succeeded in bringing together governments, private sectors, and academia to forge a common ground and interest to deal thoroughly and effectively with the matter. Indonesia is ready to enhance public-private partnership, or PPP, in dealing with the issues of cyber crimes and cyber security in region. Fourth, complementary cyber security and law enforcement capabilities are critical to safeguarding and securing cyberspace in the future. We can collaborate to strengthen law enforcement cooperation through capacity building on investigation sharing and digital forensic among ASEAN law enforcement bodies. Fifth, to make our in the force more effective, ASEAN should also have point of contact among national institutions dealing with cyber security. This list is very essential for this ease of communication and coordination, including in responding to cyber incidents affecting two or more ASEAN member states. Knowledge sharing mechanism should be developed by all member states by collectively implementing the joint exercise in ICT to build the capacity and capability. Six, as ASEAN has established a master plan to promote ICT development in its member, Indonesia will support ASEAN as a region to be a global hub for ICT. 
This achievement will further encourage member states to build, distribute, hub, and connect it as point-to-point, -point, develop common understanding on ICT, and to be more transparent in their IT policies. Hopefully, it will foster confidence and promotion of trust among states. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. ASEAN is now a region where ICT and cyber technology bring benefits to the people. It is empowering its people, transforming the way people live, and improving the economy and development, and integrated region which enables its citizens to be better connected and mobilized. Based on the report of ASEAN ICT Master Plan 2015, AIM has helped promote the economic activity of many small and medium enterprises and even large enterprises. Moreover, the ASEAN score for the pillar of innovation under the Global Competitiveness Index reveal that ASEAN has been improving in this respect. The gap between ASEAN and the rest of the world has been narrowed tangibly. AIM is expected to contribute even more to the establishment of ASEAN integration and enhancing quality of life for the people of ASEAN. Nevertheless, ASEAN is not free from the threat that requires for our shared responsibility to overcome it. ASEAN under ASEAN political and security community blueprint has mandated us with the focus on, among others, strengthening cooperation in combating cyber crimes. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, I would like to share Indonesian government's pers perspective in maximizing the opportunities and minimizing threats by first. Consolidating and strengthening capacity of institution that has cybersecurity function in many aspects. Second, by promoting the awareness of information security and fostering education to all stakeholders. Third, by adopting international standards on security management such as ISO 27001. Fourth, by establishing international cooperation and information exchange on cybersecurity and knowledge sharing. Fifth, by issuing new regulation on ICT. And sixth, by actively contributing the establishment of norms and laws on cyberspace to international fora. In conclusion, allow me to reiterate that cyberspace provides common benefits and challenges to all human beings in all regions. We must ensure that cyber technology will be able to contribute to mutual trust and prosperity of our nations. For that purpose, we need to keep fighting to preserve an open, secure, free, peaceful, inclusive, and tolerant cyberspace. Thank you.